Prima Media's engineering news is talking to Daryl Castle, the CEO of PPC. Can you give us an idea of your strategy and vision for PPC? We've had a hard look at, at Africa and the, the thing that strikes us is that Africa is going to double in population by the year 2050. We essentially have a 35-year strategy if you want to take advantage of that. Not only is, is it doubling, um, but it, it's got the highest rate of urbanization in the world. So the number of people that will move into urban areas in, in Africa is tremendous. What that tells you is, is the degree of infrastructure spending in Africa has got to be immense over the next 35 years. What does that mean for PPC? If we just start by saying we look at our current Africa market share, which is about 8%, and we say over the next 35 years if we want to maintain that market share, um, uh, we think we have to double this company more than every 10 years, probably around six, every six or seven years, whatever that means, whether it's volumes, profits, etc. We traditionally are a very focused cement company. And in fact, the more we look at it, we are anomalously cement focused. So. Of, of all the major companies, we have a disproportionate amount of our revenue in pure cement. We're close to 80%. It, it seems to us it's a sensible strategy going into Africa because all of these other things actually create the demand for the cement. And, and so we, we think we've got to have a competence around growing a lot of other businesses around with cement as the core, but adjacent businesses to that in Africa. So we're starting to structure our company and think about when we, when we go into a country, what else do we do? Do we do uh, concrete products? Do we do bricks? Do we do ready mix? Um, uh, we may even end up a little bit in retail because if we transporting all our cement and bags to a city um, that doesn't have major retail infrastructure and we start selling it out of our warehouses, you automatically start being in, in retail to some extent. Then there's, there's all the businesses around the input side. Um, You've got to create energy um, and various other inputs into your business. Uh, should we be in some of those areas? Um, and then finally, some, some things, for instance, like waste management. Um, the thing about a cement plant is it's, it's a great place to, to burn things, and you can burn waste. And uh, if you can get it for free, it's certainly cheaper than, than burning stuff you pay for. Um, so we can start providing waste management solutions which reduce the cost of our operations. So we're taking a much more holistic approach uh, as a strategy and we're saying much more strongly into Africa. And we, we're saying that South Africa is simply one region in Africa. So let's not think of ourselves as a South African business that is expanding into Africa. We don't see Africa as a place. We see Africa is a continent with many different places to do business and we've got to have a competence in each region in Africa which we're going into. All our businesses must be indigenous. So, you know, in, in South Africa it may be called BE, but in, in Rwanda or Ethiopia, we've got to make sure that predominantly locals are running our businesses. Just tell us about the footprint you've got in Africa already. Big expansion in Zimbabwe, which will come on stream at the end of 2016. Rwanda is our flagship at the moment because Rwanda, uh, the commissioning started last year, September. So we're in the ramp up phase and for us that represents a project that's, that sort of proves our ability to deliver a project and deliver a business, uh, which are two different things. Um, so we're paying a lot of attention to that and that's ramping up and going nicely. Then we've got the big project in the DRC, um, just to the, the west of, of Kinshasa. Uh, which will be a very big project for us coming on stream around again end of 2016. And then finally uh, we are in Ethiopia um, which will start in the first quarter in 2017. Behind every operation we've got there's a significant limestone deposit and that's part of the key in Africa is number one it's understanding where the market is um, or even will be in the future and where the limestone is. Um, and, and limestone is not as difficult to find, say, as copper or something else, or gold or whatever in Africa. It's a bit more uh, ubiquitous, but um, certainly finding a great limestone deposit near a great growth node is what you want to do. Um, of course, there are, other, there are other resources that you need. You need coal, you need gypsum, you need all of these kind of things. And, 
and they can add, add substantially. If I look at our Rwanda business, our gypsum costs are quite a significant portion of our cost base because it's not there, we've got to import it. Um, whereas in South Africa, it's negligible. I mean, it's not a, not a big deal. Um, so, so all of these things in, in the feasibility become very important to understand from a mining and resource perspective where you want to be located. Um, but of course, again, cement, low value product, and your logistics is a significant portion of your cost base. So the closer you can get all of these things to, to the market that you want it to be in, that's, that's what wins you the game in the end. But our medium term game plan is, is, to, is to find new resources, so we spoke about limestone, um, find new limestone that people don't know where it is yet, so probably engage in some form of exploration, for, for cities which aren't yet there. Um, if you think of Africa and the number of people that have to urbanize, um, there are going to be massive cities created in the next 35 years, which today just appear as small towns. And, and if we wait until they start becoming big cities, we're only ever going to get expensively into projects that other people have sourced. What we've got to be doing is right now be positioning ourselves for the next city and the next cement factory that's going to be required in 10 years' time so that we don't go and buy it expensively in five years' time. And do you see the actual mining of the limestone as core to your business, or do you get other people to do the mining? We generally do the mining ourselves. Um, it, it's, not, it's not as core in the sense that typically mining is, is, is not a huge part of your cost base. Also, the technology allows a certain level of variability in your, in your limestone in particular, um, and, and it without affecting your cement quality. But I think more and more over time, uh, the mining side of the business will become more critical as you try and optimize your profits by minimizing your variability uh, from your limestone forward, which goes into all the, you know, the key mining kind of aspects around understanding uh, the quality of your deposit in, in a much greater resolution than we do currently. So. I think it's going to become a key part of our arsenal, um, particularly understanding the ore body and how to mine it selectively. Um, but it's, it's quite frankly, it's not, it's not of the same kind of uh, level of significance in the group that you would find, say, in a, again, in a copper miner or, or something like that. But you wouldn't consider mining coal and gypsum and everything else that you need? We, we would consider it. I mean, I think what we're saying is all of these businesses are open to us. So, I mean, if... Hypothetically, if a, if a coal deposit happened to be right near where our limestone deposit was and you know, we could mine the two together and, and even sell coal externally as well, we would certainly consider it. Um, I don't think we'll go into coal mining for the sake of being in coal mining or gypsum mining for the sake of being in that. But we have a competence, we know how to mine, we do it, we've got a mining department, uh, we know how to run it and, and if, if we need to, and that's the thing in Africa, you know, it's not always accessible, it's not always, um, uh, somebody may not want to mine a, a coal deposit on the scale that we want uh, to run a cement factory. So we might go and do it on a small scale for ourselves. And if that happens to, to expand, well, so be it. Are you still seeing opportunities in South Africa? In South Africa, our opportunities really are selling cement, right? So, so we look at cement demand in South Africa. And... Um, Surprisingly, cement demand has done reasonably well. And in fact, there's been a bit of a dislocation. Um, if you go back 10 years or 15 years, there was quite a close correlation between GDP growth, gross fixed capital formation growth, and cement volume growth. And um, that's dislocated on the upside. So cement volumes have actually been surprisingly strong in the South African context, given how sluggish our economy is and how sluggish infrastructure spending is. Um, and we think this is a, is a function of so many more people in South Africa moving into the home ownership kind of sphere, um, really on the low end of it, but then, then spending a lot of money to, to add rooms and, and alterations to their houses over weekends. And, and this is kind of an area that surprised us and, and that's probably why you see the uh, the, the retailers, the mass cash bills, all of these guys 
constantly showing very good results um, in the last sort of five, ten years. And it's because a lot of a lot of it goes into what we call unrecorded additions and alterations. So it's people informally building a room and they go to the, the, the local hardware and they buy a couple of bags of cement. Um, and in fact, recently I, I, we're involved in housing schemes for our staff. And I, I recently went to the Muffet King area and uh, opened a few cut ribbons at a few houses. People were very happy. It was their first house. Um, and we stood on the veranda of one of the houses and looked around and I, I didn't count, but I mean, probably if you could see 30 houses around you, probably 20 of them had their own little building project. So they all had their pile of sand, their bags of cement, their aggregates, and they were building on a room onto their house. And it just shows you the level of that which goes on. It's people going home for the weekend and what they do is they add another room for, for the baby that's coming or for the... Um, you know the parents or whatever it is and that's been that's been really holding up cement demand it, cement demand feels weaker um, to us as as producers for three reasons probably one is is that um, the importers have come in into our market so although the cement demand is growing the importers are are, are taking that Secondly, we've had two new competitors come into the market. So, you know, eating our market share makes it feel weaker for us. Um, and thirdly, pricing has been used to get market share for those new people. So there, there's very little pricing power, which w with sort of 3 4 5% volume growth, you would expect a bit more pricing power. But because pricing power is so weak, it, it makes it feel like demand is weaker than it really is. Um, so for us, the big question going forward is, you know, do we go back to these historical relationships? Uh, do people not have money to, to start doing these building projects? Um, and that would be a, a, a negative scenario. Or does this demand continue? And in fact, then does it get augmented because the government uh, comes to the party in terms of infrastructure spending on top of that? And we could have quite a positive uh, outlook if that happens, because certainly that's the area that's been weak and lagged. Um, although you might in Santon see a lot of building, the, the big infrastructure projects that are required in the country just haven't picked up to the extent that um, we're catching up any kind of backlog on infrastructure. That was Crema Media's Engineering News Online talking to Daryl Castle, the CEO of PPC.